Hello everyone. It's been a while since we are using LLMs and now we know that LLMs have become a backbone of our conversational AI apps. But these models do have some limitations and the biggest limitation is the context length. So every LLM has its own context length, whether it is 4,000 tokens, 16,000 tokens or something else. So now question is, if we have this much of restriction, how can we go ahead with our long conversations? How can we perform the conversation which are going like for hours or for days? And especially when we have a small context, it's very difficult to deal with large documents wherein we need to ask some questions, get the response out of it. So this has become the bottleneck when we are using huge conversational, uh, I would say, duration. And the biggest challenge here is to maintain the conversation history. So if you are doing this particular or running this app for hours, then it would be difficult sometimes based on how much uh, questions or the answers you are exchanging between this conversational AI app. And the best way to handle this is to go ahead and change the contextual length in the transformers. But again, transformers have their own limitations in terms of memory and computation. So we cannot simply go ahead and change the context length just to make our app work better with longer context. And just out of that uh, shortcoming, MemGPT is here because it relies on a change wherein we can go ahead and change the architecture of the transformer in such a way that it can work with longer context. So although it is working with the smaller context, but it will give you an illusion that you have infinite length or the context length available with you. So let's get started with this MemGPT, which was released just last Thursday. And I'm going to show you first of all, how it works so before getting started let me quickly tell you that if you know how operating system works if you have seen your if you have read any operating system book then you must have seen this particular type of diagram or even this diagram wherein we are just talking about swapping the memories so we do have ram we have a hard drive and now we are saying as let's say user is asking something that get me this page so first of all, our system will go ahead and read it from the RAM. And if it's not there, then only it will go to our backend system, grab that page and show it onto the user screen. So how this entire thing is working. So there is a concept called paging. And due to this virtual pagination, only we are able to show required information to the user, although all that information is not, sit, not sitting in the RAM. And here you can see this is the diagram where these are the actual pages. Let's say you can say uh, take it as a, a book of 23 pages, but you have a very small RAM where you can just make these many pages sit. So in order to address all these pages, you have to swap in and out all the pages which are required every now and then. Now there are cases when user will need page one, but after two minutes, it may user may ask for page number five. So in that case, we do have something called pagin pagination wherein things can handle uh, this particular scenario seamlessly. And same is the case with our MemGPT also. How it works is it just creates a virtual context in between. So if you will look at this diagram, the first one, first section is the event, which is nothing but the external activities. It could be user message, it could be uh, it could be a document uploaded by the user or any system alert. So when these were received by this MemGPT, it will just use LLM along with the virtual context mechanism. So what this virtual context is, it will maintain two different contexts. The first one is the main and the second one is the external context. And the main context is nothing but our actual LLM context length, maximum length, uh, token length, what we are talking about. So this still relies on the maximum token limit, whatever your model is supporting, along with the external context. So external context is nothing but like an unlimited token. So from user point of view, it's kind of very seamless. He will not get to know what is happening inside this virtual space. The only thing he or she will realize is, oh, I'm having infinite tokens to deal with my long conversations. So this is the real jam of this entire system, where, which we call it as a virtual context. And so this MemGPT works 
in such a uh, like great way wherein it can swap pages from here and there or the context or the information from here and there without user getting noticed about that. And once this is done, it will work the way how LLMs work. It will query your database, pause and drop, send system, send messages or writing to your database, whatever you want, it will just go ahead and do it. And if you want to know, know what are the internals, how this kind of systems are working, you can just go ahead and read the paper over here. And the, you can also see the title, it says towards the LLM as operating system because it is working in the same terminology or the concept in which operating system swaps the pages. So similarly, it is swapping your context in, inside this virtual context. So you can go ahead and read this pages. Let me quickly take you to have already downloaded this paper. So this paper, uh, they've explained what are the shortcomings of our existing LLM and they will also tell you the how this system works. So this is the same diagram and here you can see that the these events are passed, pass it to the pass through to the virtual context, and that virtual context will generate the new context based out of main as well as external context and that will be passed on to LLM. Now, once the LLM uh, produces the output, it could be anything, whether you want to perform memory related operation or you just want to go back to the user with some system message. So this is the entire flow is still the same except the virtual context portion which you are sitting uh, seeing in between. Now, like here, it gives you a clear explanation of what is this main context, what is this external. So you can consider main context as nothing but your RAM, the temporary information or the volatile information which is in your memory for this short span of time. An external context, you can consider it as your disk memory or the disk storage. So it would be easy for you to compare it with the operating system so that you can understand this concept better. And here it is talking about various matrices it supports with respect to all these models. And if you want to know more about uh, main context as well as secondary, definitely you can go through this. But the another thing here is let's have a quick look at this example. So MemGPT is saying, hello chat, welcome. I'm excited to embark on this journey with you. And as a PhD student, it's fascinating to juggle ideas. Can you share what you are currently working on? So now this bot or the MemGPT wants to know what Chad is working on. And let's see what Chad is saying. I took the day off today. My mom Brenda baked a birthday cake. It was my favorite chocolate lava. And keep a note that this message was sent on October 11, 2023. Now you can see that what bot is saying and what user is saying is completely different. User is not at all responding in the terms of what to MemGPT is expecting. So what MemGPT is doing is it is quick. It will quickly switch the context based on the user's choice. So now user wants to talk about birthday, cake, favorite chocolate. This is what it is saying. So MemGPT will quickly switch the context and now say happy birthday chat. Nothing like a special treat to make the day sweeter. So now this these three lines are with respect to the most recent context. So you can see that the how the context is switched automatically without user uh, telling to the MemGPT that, okay, switch the context for me. And apart from switching the context, it is also retaining some information. So now MemGPT is aware that, okay, the guy named Chad is, uh, is having his birthday on October 11th and his favorite cake is Chocolava. So these are the two information which are already fed in this system. So next time, whenever user will chat, he need not to tell that, okay, I like Chocolava or when is my birthday so this is how it can also retain your information it is i would say self-trained based on what's going on during our conversation and here is in another example so it is memgpt saying hello chair it's a pleasure to finally have a conversation with you i'm samantha and so and so it is taking so basically it is interested in knowing his interest about computer science and dynamic areas like formula one and sailing so user is saying speed of course the thrill and what user uh, is interested in like but what uh, like ma'am gpt is asking what he thinks about formula one and sailing and he's saying of course the speed uh, speed of course he likes and again 
when this conversation was going internally system message was thrown to the mem gpt and it is saying the conversation history will soon reach its maximum limit and can be trimmed it means this is the message for the mem gpt that start working on the context switching start working on pagination side and so that user will not lose its context and this is another great feature when in user need not to remember or inform the bot that okay we are reaching out of context soon or we are done with our memory limits it is handled automatically by mem gpt okay so similar kind of example there are a lot many examples which you can see here so welcome back and here it is saying that what have you watched specifically in terms of horror movies but the user is saying i don't like horror movies i'm more into romantic comedy so now the mem gpt immediately changed its context and now it is saying i apologize for this mix up and do you have any favorite romantic comedy so this is how it is trained automatically based on what's going on as a conversation between human and the bot and there are a lot many different examples and the features what the system can do so i would recommend you to definitely go ahead and do it i believe this was really, yeah so it was released on just 12th of April last week and it's a very great enhancement or the feature for our future so just go ahead and do let me know what do you think about this particular use case i hope you understood and another last thing is um it's not only about theoretical concept there is also a github link wherein you can go ahead and explore this experiment this and let's have a look at this particular example as well so just you just need to re, uh, run main pi and here it is saying hello chad how's your day so far and now user is saying my name is brad not chad it means user need not to go ahead and update the system in the back end or retrain the model during this conversation this bot will automatically get to know that okay he's not chad he's brad and going forward he will always use the word brad instead of chad so this is like kind of very uh, great feature wherein everything is handled seamlessly during the conversation itself so you can go ahead and read this particular use this particular let me close this yeah you can fork it and definitely have a look at it these are the few packages which you need to install and get started so i hope you enjoyed watching this video and do let me know in comments what are your use cases towards this mem gpt thanks for watching